Well, we can discuss this further with Peter Kirkham, former Detective Chief Inspector with the Met Police and the data consultant Dylan Curran. Good to see you both this evening. Look, is this, um, Peter, is this a, a, a breach of the human right to privacy? I think that will be a matter for the courts to decide, but I really can't see how it possibly can be because the facial recognition bit it is actually just something knitting together two things that are both well known, long established and well regulated and that is the CCTV which is the footage and the databases behind it and all the facial recognition software does is scan the CCTV footage in live time or it can be done on recorded footage uh, and compare it against that database. But Dylan, what do you make of it all? Yeah, so there's a difference between CCTV and facial recognition. You know, CCTV is kind of like taking a picture of a crowd and putting it on Facebook. But mass facial recognition is kind of like putting that same Im image on Facebook, but going through it and meticulously tagging every single person in the crowd without their consent and then sending that image to the police. So the police know every single where every single one of those people were that day at that time. So there's not it's not really the same thing. But that's, um, only, that's only the case, isn't it, if someone is on is on the watch list? I'm not sure it specifies that, you know, because they'll have to go through every face and then identify who they are. You know, is it, we don't know yet, you know, if it's only matching it to a database of um, previous criminals or terrorists, like, we don't really know that right now. What's your understanding, Peter? We do know exactly right now. That's what they're doing. Uh, they, you know, it, the, the technology, obviously, like all technology, can be used in different ways and in other ways uh, and in different mm -hmm. applications, and, and those things need to be debates that are had when they come. But at the moment, that's all that's happening. Uh, I think Dylan's been watching too much Minority Report. If he thinks that this camera system is linked up to a database of everybody's faces, it isn't. What they're using it for is quite specifically looking for wanted people. Well, that's not exactly true because in, in, in the United States, you know, Amazon's facial recognition system is being tested using the Department of Homeland Security's massive facial database. And, you know, right now they are so actually the testing States. it. So, yeah, in the United States. But that's the general direction of facial recognition technology. But on the basis that we can't, you know, we this this court case and the issues around this are based on on where we are at the moment. I mean, is it, is there an issue, Dylan, in the fact that I mean we're, that we're not giving permission for this to be used? Because I mean that's going to defeat the object if you're looking for a missing person or someone of interest, isn't it? Well, you know, there's actually zero evidence to support that this facial recognition will reduce crime or find missing people or any of that. We don't actually know yet. You know, maybe it could be used to solve crimes, but ultimately I think it's more of a time-saving measure for officers to not have to crawl through CCTV footage, but you know, that could be a good thing. But ultimately criminals generally find a way around that kind of thing. Facial recognition is going to be less effective at night. That's when a lot of um, violent crime occurs. And a simple mask or even a hood totally invalidates this usually expensive, taxing, imperfect and very, very invasive system. It's just not... He's talking about something that isn't happening and isn't envisaged to be happening any time soon. At the moment, they are simply using it No, I'm not, because there was, the more than, there was more than... Well, ho hold on, Dylan, let at the me moment, finish. At the moment, they're using it in the same way that cops get a wanted poster and go out and see if they can find the wanted guy, or they put it in the public domain and ask the public to ring up if they see the wanted guy. To say that this technology, which could obviously uh, potentially find that wanted guy a lot more effectively than a handful of cops, and there's ever fewer of them, um, it, it, it's just ridiculous. If you don't agree with it being used in that way, then you need to stop the police looking at anybody just in case they might see someone who's wanted. Okay, but the police are using, than... in effect, biometric data, aren't they, in terms of the facial recognition? They are, you, is that not an invasion in the sense that we may, you know, I may not be on the wanted list, the watch list, I hope I'm not, but, but my face would still be looked at, scanned, rejected, but I'm still being looked at and scanned. The same as a cop does. It, I mean, it's literally, it is, no, it scans everybody, and if it sees a face that's on the, the watch list, on the database that's attached to it, uh, and that can be changed to various databases and various uses, um, then it, it pings up a hit, otherwise it forgets all about you. And the footage yep, is recorded just on the, exactly the same basis as any other public space CCTV footage. You're talking about this in the sense that it's more of an individual scale, where it's not. This is on a mass surveillance scale, which is where it's kind of headed. Otherwise, the technology is useless. If this isn't deployed all over the country, what's the point of using it? 
you know, so this is actually going to be on a mass scale and then deposited into a huge databases. Otherwise, it's actually worthless. And then you could make the point then even thus far that, you know, if this is operating the same as um, a typical police officer, more than 200,000 spent more than 200,000 pounds was spent on the six trials of the system that I saw. Uh, not a single arrest was made as a result. There was multiple false positives and a man was fined because he covered his face walking past the cameras. That's an absolute joke. That money could have hired six or seven police officers who are actually going to be of assistance to the community. This kind of system is going to cost millions and millions on a useful scale. And right now, there's no evidence to suggest that's actually worth the money. Even just building a database of age appropriate HD photos of every citizen in the UK, you know, that would require a huge amount of resources. Um, and otherwise, if you don't do that, the system's not useful. Mate. You're fantasizing. You need to stop watching Minority Report. I'm not fantasizing. This is what's reality. happening in China. This is literally exactly what they're in doing China, in China. And yeah, fine. What's, but not here. And why is that so different? Why is that not because the general that's direction? China. Have an argument what? with China. Don't what? tell the UK authorities not to use it in a tiny little way just because it's misused somewhere else. You lot in America use guns in a very strange way. We don't. I'm not in America. I'm in Ireland. But, OK. Well, look, well doesn't Dylan raise a point... Peter, in the sense that if this techn technology is deployed, and you know, in a way that you think it is, is good to be deployed across the country, that does open the door, doesn't it, for somewhere down the line, more of us to be on a database and to be monitored in that sense? Of course, the, the technology can be used in all sorts of ways. But to say we're not going to use it in a good way is a Luddite argument. Because we can't uninvent it. it. If we get some sort of government that wants to misuse it, the fact we haven't used it for a good reason now doesn't going to stop them using it for a bad reason. They'll just start from scratch using it for a bad reason. It's a Luddite argument. Isn't it? Well, there's, there's a sense in that, Dylan, isn't there? In, in, you know, we have rules and regulations which the government employs. If a government changes those rules and regulations, I mean, ultimately, it's what democracy is for, isn't it? We get rid of them. Yeah, but have people voted on having this sort of facial recognition system? They haven't. You know, it's kind of a tragedy that police and governments are always vying for, you know, a little bit more power, a little bit more control. And these systems always start out in little, small, useful ways that seem reasonable. But, you know, um, emerging technologies are consistently used to oppress and monitor their own citizen. You know, it's... Um, Despite the global downward trend in violent crime around the world over the last 30 years, mass surveillance has been ramped up to an unbelievable scale where, you know, there's unchecked, opaque organizations like the GCHQ in the UK and the NSA in the States collect and analyze massive volumes of data on a citizen's innocent or guilty without any, and I mean like any evidence at all, to suggest it reduces crime. So I'm not saying that this facial recognition system doesn't have any appropriate or good uses. I'm saying I don't know if we can even trust law enforcement to use it for just that good purpose when historically they've always abused emerging technologies. You've got absolutely no evidence to justify the statements you're making. We know that repeatedly the police and the security services in this country foil terrorist attacks. I think it was 19 that were mentioned just the other day in the last year or so. That's not done by magic. That's done by all the things that people like Dylan stand against. OK, look, there we must leave it. Dylan, Peter, thank you both very much indeed.